For Greater China, we actually think it still has quite a bit of room to go. Um, globally, probably you see cyclicals and financials, particularly in the U.S., having made pretty significant moves and really back to pre-COVID levels or in some cases even above pre-COVID levels. In Greater China, I would say the gap between growth and value still remains fairly wide. In particular, if you look at um, you know financials, for example, there are still very distressed valuations and very high dividend yields. Um, I, I would say in particular, recently there's been two regulatory changes that uh, further fortify our um, optimism towards greater China financials and cyclicals. One is that Governor Guo Shuting has mentioned that um, Chinese banks can potentially start to raise uh, loan rates this year uh, in line with market, which was very unexpected comment because people had in the past been assuming that the sector is really going to be just a national service type of sector indefinitely. So I would say that's a positive surprise. And you already start to see some of the banks start to react on the back of that, albeit still at very distressed valuations. The second thing is that when the policymakers started to talk about supply side reform and how uh, to achieve carbon neutrality on target, China needs to stop um, increasing the production of various commodities, including including steel and others in the coming years, yep. that could actually put some pressure on the supply and uh, further support commodity prices as well. So these are two unexpected changes in terms of policy okay. tone over the last couple of weeks.